it's cold in the city. It's cold as ice. Ace Phillips, the famous hockey player, is dead. Now it's up to Kane to figure out if it's accident or murder. Starring William Garvey as Martin Kane. This is Martin Kane. Distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar. Dill's Best. Model. And Tweed present. Martin Kane, Private Eye. Starring William Gargan. Only 20 seconds left in the game, fans. The score is tied 3 all. The Blades and the Purples fighting furiously, recklessly for the gold. It'll mean a shot at the second place Ramblers and a possible league championship. Here is the action in center ice. Now it's going down toward the Blades goal, and there's a stopping of the action as the Purples return the play furiously up towards the, the other goal. There they are fighting, and the crowd is definitely in an uproar. And this game is going on fast and furious. Ramblers, second place is at stake here. Once again, the crowd comes in full of action. There's the play in center ice again. The crowd comes up. Well, oh boy, those purples sure look plenty hot tonight. Oh, God. You know, uh, you guys are going to have to play some to beat him out of that championship, Ace. Nah, don't go losing any sleep over it, Eddie. As long as the Ramblers got Ford named Ace Phillips, the Ramblers got championship insurance. <laughs> you understand my meaning. Do it, do it again. Uh, look, Ace, I know it's none of my business, but uh, you've got to play tomorrow night. Oh, uh, stop, stop making noises like a mother hen poor, Eddie. <laughs> All right. Never mind a drink, Eddie. Ace isn't staying. Get your hat and coat. You're leaving here. Oh, am I? I hadn't noticed. Come on, get off that bar stool. You got a game to play tomorrow night. Don't worry, baby. Ace will be on that ice. And Ace will say that old Pop Wagner and all his little ramblers win the championship. Ace will present the old boy with a cup personal. Come on. Keep your hands off me, Murdoch. I'll leave when I get good and ready. Don't hand me that, mister. You're leaving here right now. Mr. Ching Murdoch. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Too bad photographers aren't around to catch Mr. Ice Hockey with his face full of splinter. <laughs> Ace, don't go out in that weather. Hey, come back here, you crazy fool. that this star rookie, Ace Phillips, is missing, Miss Price. That's right, Mr. King. When Ace didn't report to practice this morning, Thistles went to his hotel. Oh, who's Thistles? He's the Rambler's trainer. Oh, I see. And uh, what is your interest in Mr. Phillips? None, Mr. Kane. Believe me, I couldn't care less what happened to anyone. But it's Pop Wagner, the owner of the Rambler's I'm concerned for. Mm -hmm. You see, this championship means everything to Pop. I'm Pop's secretary and, well, you might say his business manager. 
I understand that the club is in bad straits financially. Uh, is there any truth to that report? Aye, it's true. Terrible true. I did it, Ken. How Mr. Wagner is going to keep the wolves from taking his team lock, stock, and barrel. Mr. Kane, this is Mr. McDonald. I answer quick as to thistles, laddie. Hello, thistles. I'm sorry I'm late, lass. Did you tell Mr. Kane the purpose of our visit? Yes, Miss Price had told me that one of your hockey players is missing. I assume that you want me to locate him by tonight. Aye, that we do. Ace Phillips is a bad one. He's no good right down to his socks. Aye, but he's a good hockey player, and we kind of win we ought to. When was he last seen? In Eddie's bar last night about 10.30. Mm -hmm. You got to find him, Mr. Kane. If the Ramblers didn't win this championship first tonight, Mr. Wagner will lose the team. You see, Mr. Kane, for the past two seasons, the Ramblers have lost money, and Pop has had to borrow heavily to keep the team going. And that filthy hyena, Barron, has bought up all of Mr. Wagner's promissory notes. You mean Jake Barron, the racketeer? Aye. He's demanded payments of the notes by the end of the week or complete control of the team. I see, and in order for Pop to pay off, he'll have to win the championship uh, purse, is that Aye. it? Aye. At best, the Ramblers have only an outside chance of winning Mr. Kane, but without Ace Phillips... It's hopeless. All right, Miss Spicer. And, uh, Thistles, uh, if Mr. Phillips is in this town, I'll locate him by tonight. You can count on me. Good. I knew you were the lad for the job. And now, about your fee, Mr. Kane. You understand, of course, that the lass and myself are not very rich. The size of our purse is we. Therefore, the size of your fee will have to be modest. <laughs> Now, look, Pop, why don't you listen to reason? I'm offering to take the club off your hands right now before the game starts. You can walk out of here with 50 grand in your pocket and not a worry in the world. It's just like I told you. I'm not selling the Ramblers to anybody, Baron, especially you. Okay, sweetheart, it's your funeral. But you know I'm taking that club over this week anyway. I just hate to see you retire broke. Huh. I didn't know philanthropy was one of your virtues, Jake. Are you sure you're not worried that the Ramblers might win tonight? No, oh, not a chance. That moth-eaten bunch of old men you call a team will get slaughtered. Why, a couple of good body checks, they'll be dragging them off the ice in baskets. Aren't you forgetting Ace Phillips? You know, I wouldn't count too much on the league star center if I was you, Pop. The smart money boys are saying that Ace ain't gonna skate tonight. If you've been tampering with any of my players, Baron, so help me, I'll have the law on you. Take it easy, Pop, take it easy. You're gonna bust an artery. Well, what do you mean by a crack like that? What do you mean Ace won't skate tonight? You understand English, don't you, Pop? If you're trying to bluff me, so now listen. me out. Why don't you ask Ching Murdoch about the hassle him and Ace had last night in a bar? Eddie's place, my boys tell me. Eddie's place? Yes, that's right. It's like them boys of yours just never want to keep training, eh, Pop? Well, going out to my seat now. You should change your mind before game time. One of my boys will be right out in the hall. He'll know where to find me. Tessels. Hey, come in here a minute. Hey, Mr. Wagner. Fizzles, how did Ace Phillips look at practice this morning? I can't say, sir. You see, the lad didn't show up for practice. Well, why wasn't I told about this? Well, we didn't wish to worry you, sir. Elaine and myself. We thought we might find the lad before game. You mean... You mean he's still missing? Aye. Ah, oh, Thistles, I should have been told about it. I could have done something. I could have notified the police. Don't you see? This is some more of that fellow Baron's crooked work. And now it's too late. No, it isn't, Pop. Mr. Kane just found me. Chase is in the locker room dressing. I knew you could do it, laddie. Mr. Kane, this is Mr. Wagner. Well, this is an honor, sir. I suppose you wonder why I'm in this picture. Well, uh, Thistles and Miss Bryce will retain me to locate Ace Phillips. And you're Martin Kane, the private investigator? That's right. Now, I uh, I think you better take a look at your hockey player. I, I wouldn't call him exactly uh, Chipper. Hey, this is terrible. The lad's got a temperature of 103. I'll be all right. I just caught a little cold. Our star center isn't going to let us down tonight, is he? You're looking for another dose what I gave you last night. Oh, you're kidding, Ace. 
You haven't got guts enough to swat a fly unless he's looking the other way. I'll show you. You oh, All right, yeah. all right. Now get out of here, Ching. I'll get to you later on. Me? What for? Eddie's place last night. That's what for. I'm fining you $200 for breaking training. Now you get out on that ice. Ace, I'm going to take every cent of that $200 out of your hide. You can count on it. Yeah. Uh, this isn't what I would call a team spirit. Wagner. Well, I'm not worried about Ching's game. <laughs> He'll play like a champion even if I find him a whole year's salary. Uh, All right, Thistles, how about it? Will Ace be able to play tonight? I don't know, Mr. Wagner. The lad's getting the flu, I fear. No, he's not, son. Just having a little chill. That's enough out of you. Thistles and I'll decide whether you're going to play or not. You want to win that championship, don't you? You should have thought of that before you went on that bender last night, mister. Don't tell me you want a piece of this club, too, Sherlock. Now, you shut up, Ace. Now, Mr. Kane, where did you find him? In a two-bit flop house down by the waterfront. The proprietor found him in the gutter, dead drunk. Hey, it's a wonder the lad hasn't got pneumonia. What is this, anyway? Awake? I can still play the skates off them bombs. Just give me a chance to warm up a little. I'll show you. Uh, Mr. Wagner, we might let him play the first few minutes of the game. Yeah. Yes, and the minute that we get possession of the puck, we'll put on a six-man press. Pull Ching out of the cage, put every man on the attack, and maybe we'll just be able to take the Purples by surprise. As soon as we get a goal, we'll take Ace out of the game. We'll put in our defensive men, our best defensive men, and we'll try to shut the Purples out. Hey, that sounds like good strategy. Say, <clears throat> Thistles, I think Ace could do with a little pick-me-up. Well, as coincidence would have it, have a wee drop in my locker, it's good Scotch whiskey. No, no, Thistles, you better give him a drink of brandy. That concoction in the cabinet? That's right, you give him a good stiff shot and get him out there on that ice. Well, what do you know? Old Mother Hubbard's gonna let her bad boy sneak a drink from the cupboard. You're not my problem, Mr. Phillips, but let me give you a little advice gratis. Play your heart out tonight. A lot depends on it. You're kidding me, Buster. Hello, kid. Yeah, all over my jersey. Yeah, you're having kind of a nervous night tonight, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, it right away, but I'll change your jersey. You can't go out in the ice smelling like that in front of them referees. Why, they put you off the ice as quick as they could a whiff of it. Here, change your jersey. Good luck. <coughs> Stuff. Oh. Hey, All-Star, your public's clamoring for you. Game time, five minutes. Oh, if only that third-rate loud knock was playing with the purples tonight. They'd have to pick his pieces out of the nets with a pair of tweezers. Watch yourself on that ice tonight, Ace. You know, I got a big interest in you. Yeah, I heard you got quite an interest. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Win Elliott at the Garden, about to bring you the play-by-play -play report of the championship game that's in the offing between the Purples and the Rams. This is the one that well, yeah, counts. We'll come down to the wire. The entire season means nothing. Strategy. This game counts it all. Of course, the Rambers and Pop Wagner, they've got their future on the line. Pop's depending upon Mr. Ice Hockey himself, Chen Murdoch in the nets, and Ace Phillips' is eccentric but wonderful new center has just come to the floor this year. The crowd is anticipating, of course, and here's the face-off. There's Phillips to the right, the Ramblers in the dark uniforms. Just a minute. Bob Wagner has pulled Ching Murdoch out of the goal. He has six attacking forwards on the ice. This is the most sensational maneuver ever in the history of hockey. The Ramblers on the goal, but the Purples return the thrust. The crowd's going crazy, as you might expect. Here's a face-off right at the Purple goal. Here comes Phillips right into the goal. He shoots, it's blocked, and he goes to the ice. And the Purples come back on the attack in the room zone. There's half of the blue line. Play continues up in center ice, however. Here come the Purples. Remember, that goal is empty, but they're stopped at the blue line. And the Ramblers come back on the attack, fighting desperately. This is the game that counts. Pops futures on it. Here's a shot on the net. It's kicked off by goaltender Purple. And here come the Purples back again in their own zone. And the Ramblers on the charge again. They come in and close on the goaltender for the Purples. They shoot. And the Purple goalie knocks it aside. And the puck goes crashing over the fireboards, and so do the players. Look at them scramble into the boards. There's the whistle. Play is stopped for a moment. Just a minute, come down the other end. There's Phillips in a fight with one of the purples. He's a fight with the ice. He's down. He's hurt. Oh, Phillips, they're fighting furiously. The There's another player on the other side. This game is out of control, ladies and gentlemen. The officials don't like it. They don't know what's going on. I don't like the way he's playing ice. We can't tell what's going to happen in this game. Who knows? It's the last game, and it may be the last game of hockey in this town. They're still fighting. Hi, Hap. 
matter? You going in the junk business or something? Oh, oh, hello, Freddie. No, I'm fixing my radio bowl. I was listening to the hockey match and this blasted Gil Hickey went on the blink. <laughs> this was a radio? This is a radio, if you don't mind, mister. Now, what can I do for you, Freddie? Well, you can tip me off to a good mixture. I'm tired of what I've been smoking lately. Well, Freddie, you sure come to the right place. I did? Yes, sir. If anybody inquires about a mixture, I always recommend this one here. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Now, look, Hap, don't sell me. Tell me. All right, Freddie, I will. Old Briar's made from the world's finest imported and domestic tobaccos. Meaning what? Meaning the natural golden brown Kentucky Burley, the lightest Virginia tobacco, and the rich imported Latakia. Sounds good. Ah, it tastes good, too. Makes a fellow want to sit back and relax and forget about all his troubles. I could sure use a lot of that, Hap. Ah, oh, and the aroma. Freddie, you'll have to beat the women off at the great big club because they surely go for that old briar roll. You sure know a customer's weak points, don't you? Oh, oh, no, you do me harm, but you do me harm. But if you want a mixture, there's the one for you. Oh, wait a minute, I want to show you something else. Huh? This wonderful old briar pouch. See how wide it opens up? For easy filling. Holds down tight. To prevent spilling. It's a good deal. Tell me, Hap, how much is this mixture you're recommending? Well, you're not going to believe it, but I have to tell you. Just 15 cents. 15 cents? Only 15 cents. Hap, you have made a deal. Well, thank you very much, Freddy. Come again. Nice to see you. Well, well, happy McMahon, boy radio technician. This is a radio you're destroying, isn't it? I'm fixing it. All you need is a blaster's license, and you can go into the house wrecking business. Quiet, please, quiet. Well, you have to concentrate. This is a very complicated business. <laughs> Say, even that uh, character I laughingly call my assistant. Uh, did I hear someone take my name in vain? Oh, oh, Sergeant Ross, <laughs> Captain Willis here was about to say uh, that you were sure that you couldn't fix this radio. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything like well, that. Well, it happens that my Harvard University curriculum did include a course or two in advanced electronics. Well, come on, come on, fix it. I want to hear the rest of the hockey match. You come better on. hurry up, pal. This game will be over soon. Well, let's see. <laughs> the input to the first RF tube. Uh -huh. Dual diet. I mean, try it. Audio beam power amplifier, mm -hmm. first AF stage. Uh, mm -hmm. Loudspeaker, oh, we don't need that. Huh? Well, we don't need that either. Yeah. All right, very well, Happy. If you'll be good enough to plug this into the wall out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I will. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, another season of ice hockey has come to an end. Although the Ramblers fought savagely, valiantly, they went down to defeat before a younger and stronger Purple Club. And the score, Purple's two, Ramblers one. Of course, many here tonight believe that Pop Wagner's Ramblers could have won this game and the league championship if his star center, Ace Phillips, hadn't been seriously injured right in the opening seconds of the game. Oh, my goodness, I almost forgot what I came for. Captain, Mr. Kane just phoned headquarters. He wants you down to the ice arena right away. It seems that this Mr. Ace Phillips has been the victim of a most insidious murder plot. What? A murder? Yes, sir. Well, come on, let's get over to that ice rink. Uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, well... Too bad Ace Phillips was a wonderful hockey player. Well, I might as well listen to the news. <clears throat> now I kick the plug out with my foot. What you think Phillips was murdered? From the looks of that crack in the skull, I'd say he died of a brain concussion. Uh, well, according to this report, the club's attending physician concurs with you, Captain. He gives a reason for death as brain hemorrhage caused by accidental fall on ice. With all due respect to the doctor's report, I think he overlooked the fact that Phillips was dead before he hit the ice. What are you gibbering about, Kane? Doesn't this body give off a distinct odor of almonds? So what? Yeah. Peach brandy. No thanks. Not on the job. Smell it. Mm. Smells like, uh, sm smells like almonds. Mm. Exactly. A deadly poison has been added to this, enough to kill a regiment. Well, of course. HCN. Hydrocyanic acid. Well, there's no mistaking its odor. It's like, like bitter almonds. I saw Phillips take four ounces of this tonight before he went on the ice. I was here when he drank it. Huh. Liquor before a hockey match? I isn't that a bit irregular, Mr. King? Well, Thistle and Wagner thought he had a chill coming on. They thought he might have had the flu. Sergeant, I want you to round up everybody who was in this room today. Throw them in the paddy wagon and take them down to headquarters. I'm going to find out who put the poison in this bottle if I have to grill them till next hockey season. Oh, yes, sir. And, uh, Sergeant, put, uh, put Jake in there, too. He's, uh, in the dragnet. He was here. Jake Barron, that yeah. will be a distinct pleasure, Mr. Right. King. Come on, Kane. I'll have my boys seal up this room, and we'll drop off this brandy at the police lab. Now, why waste time on an analysis, Captain? We know that there's poison in the brandy. 
Ever hear of police department routine, Kane? Oh, sorry, Captain, sorry. I didn't mean to cut any red tape. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> Yeah, sure, I was in that rubbing room. I saw that kid drink the brandy, too. Does that prove that I poisoned the hooch? After all, why would I want to have Ace Phillips dead? I was going to take over that club, and Ace was the only valuable property the club had. Now, if I was you guys, I'd ask Mr. Ching Murdoch about the slugfest that him and Ace had the other night at Eddie's bar. Yeah, I had a fight with the kid in Eddie's bar. He was on a bender. I was trying to get him out of the joint. We hear that you were fined $200 for that rope out chain, and that you threatened to take every nickel of it out on Phillips' side. Sure I did. I'm not saying I had any love for that loudmouth rookie, but I didn't put the poison in the brandy bottle. Poison isn't in my style of operation, Captain. Now see here, Mr. Keene. I've been training the Ramblers for more than 15 years. And I've yet to poison one of my players, no matter what the thought of him as a man. But you did pour that drink, and you do admit responsibility for the contents of that medicine cabinet. Certainly I'll take responsibility for the cabinet, but I might as well tell you that it's left open at all times so that anyone in the club can use it. I didn't believe in keeping my first aid under lock and key. Anyone could have put that poison in a bottle. But you didn't, huh? No. Yes, I have access to the first aid locker, like everyone else at the club. As a matter of fact, it was one of my duties to keep the locker supplied. Did you purchase this particular bottle of brandy, Miss Bryson? Yes, I did. And isn't it true that you and Ace Phillips once were in love with each other? Yes, I, I was in love with Ace once. And what were his feelings toward you, Elaine? Ace didn't love anybody but himself. I never really hated him until last week. He forced Pop Wagner to sign him to a five-year contract. A five-year contract? Yes. Ace said he wouldn't play in the championship game unless Pop signed him. He said he'd arranged to get sick just before game time. Who else knew about this? Thistles and I think Ching Murdoch. Yes, it's true. Ace Phillips blackmailed me into signing that five-year contract because, well, he thought he had my back against the wall. <laughs> that young fellow had the instincts of a hungry rat. So you fed the rat a good dose of poison in order to get out from under this contract? No, 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 I didn't. Now that you've lost the championship purse, who uh, takes over the club? Jake Barron? No. Why, rumor has it that you're bankrupt, Mr. Wagner, that Barron bought up your promissory notes. Yes, that's true. But I, 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 well, I, I was in For a what? position. Well, I carried insurance on every one of my players. Ace Phillips was insured for $100,000. <laughs> Yes, sir. Can I help you? I'd like a pouch of marble, please. Right you are, sir. Marble, the finest ten cents worth of tobacco that ever helped a man enjoy a pipe. Did you say ten cents? Yes, sir. I said ten cents, and it's plenty mild, too. That's why I smoke it. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, I forgot. The boss out at the factory wants a can of Copenhagen. Yes, sir. Copenhagen. It's the best made, you know. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. Come See again. You. Bye. Hello, Hack. Hello, Marty. How's the sergeant and the captain making out on the Ace Phillips murder? Not so good. Uh, Willis grilled them all last night, most of this morning. They all have motives, but none of them will confess. Yeah. Hey, you're okay. under arrest. Take them out, Ross, and throw them in the worst cell in the city jail. Oh, but, Captain, wait I'm... a minute. Wait a minute. What's this all about, Captain? What's it about, he says? It's about how you've cost the taxpayers of this city hundreds of dollars. It's about how you kept my men up all night grilling five innocent people. It's about... Take them out, Sergeant. Well, the captain is trying to tell you, Mr. Kane, about the laboratory report on that bottle of brand. What about it? Well, I regret to say that the chemical we all thought was hydrocyanic acid was in reality oil of almonds. Oil of almonds? Yes, oil of almonds, A genius. perfectly harmless extract, Mr. Kane. But that doesn't make sense. Why would anybody put oil of almonds in a bottle of brandy? I got a better question, Kane. Why do I always go along with your harebrained Kane? You're going to ruin my career. You didn't release those suspects, did you? Suspects. There are no suspects. I turned loose five indignant citizens ten minutes ago. We may be able to pull this one out of the fire yet, Captain. Ross, come on down the ice rink with me, will you? It may not be too late. Oh, w w with your permission, Captain. Hold it, Kane. Now, oh, look, I haven't got a chance of time to explain. Will you do me one favor, though? Will you have an autopsy performed on Ace Phillips' body? Come on. Hap, will you please tell me what's going on around here? Well, I'd be delighted to, Captain. <coughs> if I'm not mistaken, Marty's just about ready to bust this case wide open. Now, no, if you ought to keep your customary aplomb, I'd suggest that you, uh, 
make another purchase of a pouch of Dill's best so you could appear nonchalant. You know something, Hap? I got a gruesome feeling that you're right. That character Don't came. Don't worry. Light up a pipe full of Dill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Okay, Hap. Nuts to cane. I always go along with Dill's best. Well, I'll send it right over to the lab. I certainly hope they find traces of hydrocyanic acid in this cloth. If not, this body is going to be very difficult to explain. Don't worry about that, Sergeant. Jake here put that bottle of poison brandy in that medicine cabinet. He knew that Phillips had want to pick me up after the bender of last night. I see. And then while the game was in progress, he replaced the poison bottle with one containing a harmless dose of oil of almond. Right, right. And then, of course, he figured that the police would examine the bottle, find that it was harmless, and skip any autopsy on the body. One thing that Jake didn't know was that there was a insurance on all the principal players. I see. Well, I'm not quite clear as to Jake Barron's motive, Mr. Kane. After all, Ace Phillips was the Rambler star player, a very valuable property. A and, and then, even with their star in the lineup, the Ramblers were, uh, what was it, the press quoted? The uh, two-goal underdog. <laughs> Precisely the expert's opinion. Yes, but he didn't take a chance on an expert's opinion. He had to make certain by getting rid of Phillips and getting control of the club. Oh, yes, I can see the control of a team in a hockey league would prove extremely lucrative to Mr. Barron and his gambling manipulations. Still a regrettable waste of lives. Mm, murder is always a waste, Sergeant. No matter who commits it or for what purpose. Of course, I knew all the time that Ace Phillips had been poisoned. Swapping those brandy bottles was one of the oldest murder gimmicks in the books. And you let us all go knowing that the murder would return to the scene to get rid of that jersey. Correct. Well, I don't like to question the word of a renowned brain, but uh, tell me this, Captain. Why did Marty have to beg you to have an autopsy performed on Ace Phillips this very afternoon? I'll have you know, McMahon, I had a secret autopsy performed on Phillips last night. And here's the medical examiner's report. Let me see it. Sorry, mm -hmm. official police business. Oh. Medical examiner. Jane, let's course. not have any foolishness here. Here, what is this? Oh, yeah. This is a bill for a pair of pants from Sam the tailor. Medical examiner. Jane, let's just get you out. My career will be. Take it easy. Take it easy. I've got other things on my mind. Shall we, Miss Bryce? Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Happy. Good night, Martin. Good night, Captain. Good night, folks. See you next week. And keep fighting infantile paralysis. Keep giving to the March of Dimes. Thank you. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of those four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Dill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Models so high in quality, so low in price. And Tweed, the shaggy rough cut tobacco. One of the four, just right for your tobacco taste. William Gargan also appears weekly in another exciting series of Martin Kane, Private Eye, on radio over another network. Check your local newspaper for time and station.
You're watching Rarity's TV. <laughs>